What up squad, my name is Robert Glover, I'm the founder of Bricks Fitness, and if you're new to the channel, welcome first of all, and subscribe when you get a chance. Uh, this is a channel where we talk about how fitness and nutrition can essentially improve every part of your life. Uh, today's video is an interview that I had with the contest winner, so a few months ago I had a contest for my Transformation Jumpstart program. The information for my Jumpstart program is in the description below, it is changing lives, Go to bricksfitness.com and check that out. Um, I'm actually working on the at-home version of this that will be dropping within the next two weeks, I believe. So stay tuned for the at-home version. As I mentioned, this video is a really good interview with the contest winner who made a sweet transformation. And it was only 12 weeks, which is not a lot of time. So there was a 1000 cash prize for the person who made the best transformation in 12 weeks using the information from the Transformation Jumpstart program. So Andrew is our winner. And without further ado, let's get into the interview with my man, Andrew. Well, yeah, man. First of all, congratulations. Like, Thank you so much, man. Yeah, bro. Like you crushed it. And like I was super impressed when I seen your picture. Thanks so much, man. How'd you find the Brooks Fitness content? What drew me to the content was how much you talked about like the mental struggle. Mm. Um, because for me, I've been down this road before and so many people uh, have good content out there that, that to tell you how to lose weight, right? Yeah. Yeah. But not a lot of people are willing to be vulnerable and talk about like food as addiction, food as something that we've used as a mechanism that's just been damaging for our, our lives, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, also like I, you showed us when you make mistakes mm -hmm. and say, Hey, like, you know, I ate bad for two days and it's okay. I'm just going to turn it around tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Um, cause so many times it's like just this, okay, I'm either up or I'm all the way down. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so that, that type of discussion I think brings value that far fewer people mm -hmm. are out there bringing. Yeah. Um, and there's, you know, there's lots of vlogs out there, but I think that we want, people want to see you when you're optimal, but they also want to see like, Hey, this is when I'm down too, right? Human moments. They, they want you to share the human moments because mm -hmm. I feel like a lot of the times in social media, people, they just want to highlight, like you said, when they're up, their optimal moments. And it, it kind of is a, it, it gives people the wrong impression. It kind of gives people this, um, this expectation that, that life's always going to be great. They're always going to be on the A game. And if they're not, yeah. they, they feel like there's something wrong with them because the people that they look up to, so to speak, mm -hmm. always, it always appears that they're on the A game when they're, they're not. <laughs> like, we're, yeah. we're just like everyone else. So mm -hmm. I'm glad that it's, it's appreciated, man, because it takes a lot of energy, you know, to be vulnerable like that. Yeah, for sure. And a lot of people, man, because it's a, it's a lot that comes with that. But anyway, what were some of the challenges you faced during the 12 weeks? Let's just talk about okay. 12 weeks. So what are some of the biggest challenges that you that you faced? So the first one, as I previously mentioned, was uh, going on vacation. So starting out sort of not having that food prep uh, that I could just kind of lean on. I'm in my parents' house, uh, mm -hmm. so you're dealing with, with food pushers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, everyone, ah, oh, you know, you can eat this right now. It's okay. Uh, I did try to manage that by using intermittent fasting. Um, mm -hmm. so that if I knew, okay, Hey, we have family coming over, they're all bringing, you know, all the dishes that I don't even know what's in them half the time. Yeah. I'm going to go into it with like a nice window of calories remaining for my day. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that did help. Um, Really, and, and it being the beginning of the competition, that helped a little bit. But being in that vacation did teach me, though, that I, like, I still lost a little bit of weight over vacation. Um, and it did teach me I could still enjoy myself a little bit, um, get my workouts in, and enjoy my vacation. But I wasn't, I didn't say, like, hey, I'm going to go do cardio for an hour. I'll be back. It was like, I'm going to go do, you know, 20 minutes, uh, do a quick, you know, 10 minute circuit of weights or something, and then you know, go back to my family, right? And be realistic. Cause I knew I'd have a window to push it when I got back off vacation. Uh, so there was that. And then actually I had two things. Hold on, let me there. stop you right there. Hold, hold sure. that thought. See, that was profound, Andrew, because I, I remember, and I'm speaking a lot from my experience and then the experience of a lot of people that I've coached. We have this idea of what 
an exercise session should look like. Yeah. So if it doesn't, or and what it feels like. So if it if it doesn't look like an hour of cardio or an hour, thirty minutes of cardio and forty five minutes of weight and a soaked t shirt, then yeah. you don't feel like it's worth it to do. And yeah. that's the absolute worst way to look at it, because mm-hmm. like you said. A ten-minute, fifteen-minute hit session, or you know, a, even if it's just a twenty-minute walk, yeah, it's it's a hundred times better than doing nothing, right? Yeah, and that's a lot of the times like people are, and I've I've done this. We justify the fact that okay, damn, I only have ten minutes. It's not worth it. Why should I even waste my time? And that's BS. It helps a lot. Yeah. So that's yeah. the takeaway that I want the people listening right now you know, to, to take away from this is, listen, it doesn't have to look like it looks on Instagram. It doesn't have to look like how it looks in your head. A workout can be, a, you can chase ducks in a park. That's something I like to say. Like, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't have to look like what you think it has to look like. Just do something. Just yeah. do something. But yeah, go on and, and talk about and you can, any other challenges. You can do things that, that are fun too. Like, so, my favorite work, I bought a, a heart rate monitor that would connect to my phone just because I wanted to kind of see how many calories am I burning because I, I did – what you just said is, is important because if you have 10 minutes, well, you do have to ramp your intensity up mm-hmm. over those 10 minutes to make it valuable, right? Mm-hmm. So I got the heart rate monitor, um, and so I'd go to the gym. I'd get a basketball, and I would shoot a three and rebound it as quickly as I could, run back out and shoot another three, and just back and forth, and I burned – more calories on my heart rate monitor than I would on a treadmill or elliptical doing yeah. that yeah. just because I'm enjoying myself and I'm pushing yeah. myself. Right. Yeah. Um, so that, and that is a piece. If you can find something that you look forward to doing, mm-hmm. I, I still, I, I still don't enjoy being, doing cardio. I yeah. don't, I, you do it because you know you need to do it and it's important. Um, and I try to find things, podcasts, uh, I watch your YouTube videos. That's how I got started with Brick Fitness, of course. But I don't enjoy it. I, I'd rather lift weights. Um, so you can find something that, that you can like. And if you just like lifting weights, lift weights fast, do circuits, whatever you can do to enjoy. You do need to be concerned about uh, hurting yourself. Like, don't don't worry about it in a crazy way that you're just like, you know, be mindful. Um, yeah, be mindful of it because if you go into a gym and uh, are doing things that are dangerous and it sets you back for for six weeks multiple times, I did that all the time. And usually it was pride related. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. I wanted to bench, you know, 240 pounds and I really shouldn't have done it. I had no spotter and I tore my pec. Yep, uh, now right. this, the knee injury was a freak thing, but I have hurt myself multiple times watching guys and saying, I could probably push myself and do that weight, mm-hmm. hurt myself, and then all you're doing is setting yourself back multiple weeks. Uh, so it is important to be mindful uh, of what you're doing for sure. Super, super duper important. But two things that you mentioned that I want to piggyback on a little bit. Finding ways to enjoy your workout. Yeah. That is so important. You don't have to hate your workout. You don't have to hate it. And – I think a lot of people, like, back to, they have this, you know, vision in their head of what it's supposed to look like. There's, there's, there's no right and wrong way to exercise. I mean, technically, yeah, of course, you can do things with bad form, and that would be wrong. Yeah. But anything that's safe movement is good exercise. So, mm-hmm. with that being said, it, if we're just thinking about adherence, if we're just thinking about, you know, developing – this as a habit, then it just makes too much sense to find something that you enjoy to do because it's mm-hmm. going to make it more likely that you're going to stick to it. So yeah. if you don't like lifting weights, don't lift weights. Yeah. Find something else. If you don't like doing cardio on the machine, don't do cardio on the machine. You don't have to. Mm-hmm. You do not have to. And the second thing um, – the injuries, right? And I think that's why my philosophy is is consistency over intensity, right? Intensity is in, is important, but it's not super important in the beginning because you're trying to build your relationship 
with exercise. Yeah. So let's say you start dating a chick, right? Y'all just start dating, and you want to blow her phone up all day long, telling her you miss her and you love her, and that's not going to work. No. It's not going to work. So in the beginning, when you are building this relationship with exercise, I think intensity, especially for most people that have that are having weight management issues, I think intensity in the beginning is a bad idea almost. Yeah. Because it, I want you, uh, like you need to build this initial romance with this thing, and intensity is doesn't help that in the beginning. Yeah. So do you, and you can get your you can get your heart rate up. Yeah. Uh, with a far less intensity in the beginning yeah. too, right? Exactly. I was I was when I was shooting the basketball, like as I mentioned earlier, I, I filmed some of my sessions. And I'm, I'm working hard and like my heart rate was probably like, I don't know, 160. Like I was really pushing it. I felt like I was. And I watched, I watched the video afterwards. I'm like, I'm not really pushing it. Like, I <laughs> <laughs> I'm, picturing, I'm, picturing Le, I'm picturing LeBron, but it's not LeBron yeah, at all. Um, we, get so in trouble, can, we get in trouble with that, man. And yeah. Heart. But you can get your heart rate up a lot easier in, that, in, that, in the beginning, right? So intensity can come. Mm -hmm. um, just by walking on an incline for some of us, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, but we think, you know, we picture our best self uh, where, you know, when I was, you know, 30 pounds even less than I am now, really pushing it and going after it. Um, but in just, like you said, consistency um, and go a little bit harder each time. Um, and it might not even feel that, it might not even feel like you're going a little bit harder because you're just progressing slowly. Exactly. What? That's 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 exactly it. And that's kind of like my relationship with cardio, right? That's why I love this stair machine, right? Yeah. Because with that machine, I can get my heart rate jacked all the way up. With the, it's not a lot. It doesn't exert a lot of effort. It's not like yeah. running where I gotta like, like compared yeah. to what I gotta do on the stair machine and what I gotta do on the on the treadmill with running to get my heart rate at the same place, it's two different types of exertion. Mm -hmm. I like the minimal exertion, maximal, uh, you know, heart rate, let's just say. Yeah. You yeah. know, and that's why, so I'll walk on the treadmill with an incline and I'd rather do that than run. That's just, how I, I enjoy it more. Yeah. If I'm running, I want to be outside. I want to be seeing things. I want to, you know. Yeah. Play. So, so that's that's a really good point. Um, I found I found uh, just to touch on one more obstacle. I felt like um, with when when you're doing your food prep, like that was something that in the in the early stages uh, was easier than in the latter stages because you start out and you're excited and you you know you see you start pumping out the food prep and as time goes on, you know you have days where you're like you know be it'd be easier to not take this time to do this food prep. It's not like a, a real major obstacle. You have to just tell yourself, okay, this is important and I'm going to do it. Yeah. But food prep and food choices uh, are really important yeah. because for myself, when we first, when I first started, you know, you can eat healthy food and, and it can not taste great and you can be excited just because you're trying to lose weight. Right. Um, but that's something that I've grown more passionate about is trying to make healthy food taste better or manipulating my food in a way where, um, I have little breaks that aren't taking me off plan. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that each person has to be honest with themselves as to what it is that's going to completely throw them off. So for me, like peanut butter, I have a, I have a huge problem with peanut butter. I'll go take a spoon and eat 350 calories, you know, just in a second. Right. Yeah. Um, so for me, like I legit have to just tell my wife, take the peanut butter and put it somewhere where I can't find yeah. it. Yeah. And when I want it, I'll tell you, <laughs> yeah. you can monitor it just cause it will get me in trouble very quickly. And we have to be honest with ourselves. Like I have kids. So there's some things that I might, my, my, I have one kid who's, who's a little bit more picky. So we work harder to make healthy food taste good. Um, and even snacks we send her for school sometimes are not, in my opinion, the best choice, but we do it because we need to, right? Mm -hmm. um, but that means sometimes we have things in the house that 
are a challenge, things that I would say wouldn't be part of how I would want to eat. Yeah. But because that's there, I have to be honest with myself and say, okay, these are moments, 9 o'clock at night, if I'm going to bed at 10, between 9 and 10 is a, is a dangerous window for me, mm -hmm. just to go out to the kitchen and, and, and go a little bit crazy. So if I can have things like Greek yogurt, um, like a, a good good protein shake or whatever, something like that, turkey pepperoni, these are things that I can eat 100 calories worth. It's not going to throw me off plan. It's going to be satiating for me late at night. And I know myself well enough to know that, like my wife has said, well, just don't eat at night. You know what's a problem, don't eat at night. I know that I'm going to. So if I can prepare myself in a way where I can have something that's not going to throw me off plan, it's not, you know, 300 to 600 calories in peanut butter or something like that, um, then I'm going to be good. And peanut butter is is actually, in my opinion, okay. It's it's in a tablespoon or two tablespoons. Yeah, it's just how much you eat of it. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so knowing yourself and what obstacles the food will present in your home is a big thing. Um, you know, because we can keep ourselves sometimes from driving through McDonald's drive through but we can't. I know for myself, I'll lie to myself. I'm like, mm -hmm. well, you know, peanut butter is a healthy fat. And like, you know, as, and then before you know it, it's you out of control. It. You justify it in your head. And, yeah. you, and you spoke on another two, two very important things. Controlling your environment, right? Mm -hmm. That's, we don't have a lot of control about, you know, over a lot of things. You know, genetics, cravings, and that. It's a lot of things that we don't have control over. And to an extent, we have a control over our environment, but that's one of the things we have the most control over that has the yeah. highest impact on how well we do with weight management and, and you know nutrition and that sort of thing so that's very important and i kind of want to drive that point of you want to make sure that you are setting yourself up for success mm -hmm. with, with your environment like what is in your house like i cannot have cereal in my house i can't have i just can't bring it in yeah i know if it's in there I'm going to eat it. Just like you said, at night, we're going to eat. So I just yeah. don't bring it inside. But also, you sound like you have, you're very sharp with your, your self-awareness, right? You're very, mm -hmm. you observe. And, and that's the thing, too. Like I tell people, you want to pay attention. You want to pay attention to your, to your routines, to your habits, to your tendencies, to what sets you up for failure, what sets you up for success. Yeah, and, and work a, around those things, you mm -hmm. know, and that's very important. And that's something I always tell my clients, like, pay attention, pay attention, pay attention. Don't beat yourself up. Yeah. Pay attention to what happened. If, if you went left when you should have went right, then okay, just don't let it be mindless. Be, be aware that that happened. And now use that information to prevent it from happening again. Mm -hmm. And then you just got to build on that. You build on that. You build on that. Next thing you know, you figured out a way to master your environment, how to master yourself, how to master, you know, how to set yourself up for success. So that's very, that's, that's, that's awesome, bro. Was that, I was so concerned about it. I get on every day, just check out my weight. Things didn't move. And as you know, like with water retention, you can go up and down so much more than you think. Um, and so I just said, okay, I'm going to get on a little bit less than I, than I was. I'm still going to use it as a, as a tool to gauge my progress, but not allowing one of the tools to kind of dictate every single piece yeah. of your life. Um, cause like I, I said to, to my wife talking about like, you know, in my past, probably when I was, so I'm 32, when I was like 24 was probably like the fittest I've ever been, but I was actually probably like the least fit mentally mm. during that portion of my life mm. because I was a slave to the scale. I was a slave to going to the gym, mm -hmm. uh, even a slave to like what people thought I looked like. Mm -hmm. And so even though I can look back at pictures and say, that's the, that's the best I looked, I know I wasn't mentally there. Mm -hmm. And so, so if any of these tools ever make me go back to that place, that's not healthy either. Right. Yeah. And it, it seems like, like, Sometimes you feel like such a head case talking about it this way, but you know it has to be balanced out and you have to think about each thing a little bit individually and how it impacts you. Yeah. Um, 
I mean, I, I bought a scale, uh, I think it was two years ago, and you step on it, and it won't actually tell you your weight. It'll just tell you if you're up or down. Like, mm. it, and I, at first, I, I liked it for a little while, and it, it kind of was a tool that I used. But then, eventually, I felt like I got to a place where I said, no, I, I need to know what my actual weight is mm. so that I can, you know, just kind of own it and be yeah. mindful of it. Um, but it is something that we, we get in our own head, and we have to know uh, what our own challenges are. As you said earlier, just being mindful uh, yeah. of all of those things. So do you have any systems of accountability set up? Like what is your, like what keeps you accountable? So I would say uh, for one, as I said, the, the tracker mm -hmm. um, and my wife is someone who keeps me accountable. Uh, that was, that, that, that was something that we, we, I've been with her for 10 years now. We've went through our ups and downs with that as well. <laughs> Because no one likes telling somebody, hey, you shouldn't eat that, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People get pretty upset when you, when you tell them not to eat that. Yeah. Um, but we have an understanding now where I'll, I'll just say to her, hey, listen, I'm telling you now I'm in a good place. You remo remove the peanut butter, okay? If you see me with it, say something. Yeah. And if I snap at you, just remind me of this conversation. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how tall are you and, and what was your starting weight and ending weight? So I'm five foot eight. Okay. My starting weight was right around two twenty six, mm -hmm. and I finished right around two oh one. It kind of I dipped under two hundred afterwards, uh, but right around two. Right, so it was ended up being about, about twenty five pounds. Nice. I have a question for for you. Um, so when you've been doing your workouts, I watch. I remember you guys did a video series uh, where you did like you tested your lifts, then you retested. I don't know how long ago that was. Yeah, um, now at this, at this point in your, uh, in your workout journey, we'll call it, um, how are you, how do you motivate yourself or do you kind of go through seasons where you, do you try to get stronger? Or are you kind of happy with where you're at or what's, what's all, what's kind of motivates you at this point? Yeah. Like you said, I, I kind of have seasons. Um, my, my, my thing is, is consistency. So I know what parts of exercise I don't enjoy and which mm -hmm. parts I do enjoy. And then there's seasons where, because like, I don't really care about strength. That's not, because my ultimate goal is to be 80 years old and fit. Yeah. I can run five miles at 80 years old. So with that being said, stuff like strength isn't that important for, for that kind of goal. Right? Yeah. Because that would actually work against me if you really technically think about it with that yeah. goal because that type of extreme, and I don't want to call it extreme, but really um, intense strength, strength, strength training, it, it breaks your body down. Let me break down my, my schedule. I do three days of lifting. I lift for about 45 minutes, 50 minutes. And then I'll stretch for 15 minutes. And then I'll meditate for 15 minutes. That's what I do at the gym. I do that three days a week. And then I'll do two to three days of cardio a week. And it's interval cardio on the steer machine. I'll do about 35 to 45 minutes. It depends on how I'm feeling that day. And then I'll do 20 minutes of stretching after. So I stretch every day. And then I'll meditate after that. And that's that's. That's where I'm at right now. But yeah, man, I think I'm gonna just wrap this up. I don't want to take too much of your time. I appreciate, no I, I appreciate your uh, your particip participation in the contest. I pre I appreciate your time. You know, talking with me today, man. You're you're a very smart guy. That's very obvious. I'm super glad that someone like you won because um, it you get it, you you get it. You know, and, and that makes me feel good that. You know, I was able to reach someone that gets it, you know? Yeah. And I just want everyone to get it. I want everyone yes. to stop making the same mistakes over and over and over and over again because we have the information now. It's, and, and it's, yeah. You just got to pay attention. You got to pay attention to your body. You got to pay attention to what works, what doesn't work. And it, because it's, it's a very individual thing. Like, there's no mm -hmm. one size fits all with this shit at all. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm sorry about that. No problem. Yeah. You crushed it, man. Thanks for having me, man. It's been no great. Bad. Thanks for having right. me in the contest.
And if you ever need anything, man, shoot me an email or hit me up on, on social, bro. Like, All right. I got you. All right, man. All right. Talk to you later.